Hi, I'm here today or this evening with Sheila Sinclair Snyder, who is an Oregonian and a fabulous teacher. And I'm going to, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pick her brain. I have taken two classes from her. And you need to pay attention to this because the two class, I mean, in the quilt world, there's a lot of art going on, but there's there's some things that are achievable for us, us consumers. And the first class I took was <laughs> my Tuffet class. You all lived through this one. This was, I mean, I call it the color wheel footstool. And it's the color wheel because it can have a spectrum of colors and fabrics on it. Um, this one is strippy. And so this is a two-day class. Um, you know, the kit is included in the class and it is just a remarkable thing to put these together, select the fabrics and You have to go on um, Google else's. and Instagram, uh, look for the photos. Yeah, there's tons out Because there. you've done some very creative stuff with this. Right, so when you do, this is the original kind of color wheel footstool. Um, you know, your embellishments are not only the fabric, but the buttons that you use to tuft it down through and the style of feet you choose, whether they're embellished or painted or stained or whatever. Um, but now I've come up with a couple of new designs too. There are some people that think that the strippy footstool is a little complex and they want something a little simpler mm -hmm. in their home. Mm -hmm. So I have one that is just eight panels of fabric. That, and that's a one day class that you can complete. And then I thought, well, I actually found the inspiration of a, of a fabric that I loved and it had little critters on it. And so I, love that one. I walked into the quilt shop and there was that fabric and I said, I need to put that on a footstool, but then I had to make a new design. Did you see the cats? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and the cats for would you be cat awesome people. on it too. Yeah. So I designed a star that fits onto those panels and when it comes together it makes a star on the top of the footstool which is kind of the new thing out there. So that's that's my newer class and uh, but I, I know still I teach jumped ahead because this was one of my favorite all time favorite classes last year. I felt so accomplished and part of it is that Sheila shows up with all the tools. I mean, literally, the only thing you're gonna have to to have is this fabric and your button and you order your feet. But as far as the base and the tools to construct it, she shows up with it all. And I am proud to say that this entire stool was made out of my stash. <laughs> so you can see how I've been collecting these fabrics. And it was worth, the, oh, worth saving those for a while. Yes, and I actually, in that two-day class, made two of them. Yes. One for my daughter-in-law, yeah. out of the tulip pink fabric, and then this one. And that was the most fun. So well, and the fun thing about a class, too, is that, you know, you know your own sensibility of fabric and what you like, and but then you'll see other things, and it kind of stretches your sensibility yeah. and, you know, sees you, or, or lets you see what the other possibilities are. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a really fun thing about our class. And for me, um, it's like birthing these footstools all I know. over the Pacific I know. Northwest. I, I just, <laughs> I, I can't tell you that I was the most tickled. This is the class I had the most fun in last year. And then my girlfriend Linda took your most latest class and she used old silk dyes. Yeah. yeah. That, was <gasps> that is a stunning, yeah. stunning tuffet. You know, and I would love to have someone with some wool um, oh. experience do the paneled uh, footstool oh, uh -huh. with a wool applique on it. I'm waiting for that to happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not putting any pressure on you. I know, but wouldn't that be extraordinary? Yes. Do you think it would stretch? You'd, well, you'd you still have to back, back the, wool the wool with muslin just mm -hmm. like you do the others. Okay, okay. Because the wool wouldn't be strong enough, really, to then use it as an upholstery mm -hmm. fabric, okay. you know, to staple through it and... Okay, so we jumped ahead there because I got too excited. I had to show off my tuffet. But, so tell us about yourself. You, you live in Oregon. I live in Oregon. I live in Eugene. I travel throughout the Pacific Northwest to teach and do lectures and, so and that the, sort of thing. And so the website where they can contact you if a guild or right, a shop wants right. to have you? Um, my, my full business name is Sheila Sinclair, which is my maiden name, Snyder. And my business is called License to Quilt. 
So licensed to quilt. Yeah, that, that, that is a little bit of a story too. Yeah. Oh well. Are you willing to share? Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, when my I had another business name earlier in my career, and it was dull and boring, and I wasn't very happy with it. And I, my son was in college uh, in Portland, so it was like a two-hour drive away. And you know, college boys. They love the 007 Yeah, that's movies. what I was thinking of. And I was driving up the freeway, going to see him, thinking about him, and 007, and I thought, License to Kill, License to Quilt. Now, there is a name. There is a name. And so I changed my business name immediately, and and it's, it's a lot catchier than my previous name. And no and, one forgets it. And no one forgets it. Yeah. So either of those names you can find me by. And, you know, I'm a designer, I'm an author, I have three books of my own, and, and I've contributed to three or five others, something like that. That's I've, amazing. Quilt Folk is one that um, is a magazine that, you I know, is kind of the new magazine. thing out there. Yeah. And I have a lot of uh, articles published in both Quilts and More and American Patchwork and Quilting and Australian Quilting. And I love that one. A couple of others. Yeah. I, I hate to leave anybody out, but... You well, know, you my know. thing is designing, yeah. but when I'm teaching, you know, I love to quilt, I love to design, but when I'm teaching what I love, what really gets me going mm -hmm. and energized is a project. And so the footstool was yeah. one, and, and and I've gotten a lot of mileage out of that, and then I have a new one out right now, which is barn quilt painting, which, which was... has been so popular in the Midwest, especially in the East, but it's it's arrived in the Pacific Northwest. So too. you will travel to the and Midwest so I, and the East? Uh, no, no. I only travel in the Pacific Northwest, Northwest. because there's so much, there's so the supplies are. Mm -hmm. You have to know that she brings the supplies. That's the best. Today's <laughs> class, the barn quilt class, was like I I sat there and I thought. <laughs> She must have been a kindergarten teacher in her formal <laughs> life, you know? I mean, that's what it felt like. I had paint everywhere, literally. I mean, I must have had to repaint certain spots because I had paint on my fingers, I had paint on my apron, thank God you she told had us. paint on the floor. I had paint on the floor. <laughs> I thought, thank God I brought an apron. <laughs> because I would have had paint all over one of my favorite quilt shirts. So, um, so let's show you this yes. that you made today. And I'll bring it over here so you can see. So I let's chose. show the back first. Oh, okay. So what I bring is this board. It's 24 inch, inches square. And it's a um, plywood, but it's coated. It's, it's coated with an overlay, which um, is paintable. And it's already prepped. I mean, she's showing up with this board ready for you. It's a waterproof overlay, and then I and I paint two layers of, of exterior primer on it. So then we're ready for exterior paint, and people have like, you know, three dozen or so different blocks to choose from, and, and Anna chose the spools. I, I actually might have pushed some people out of the way to get that <laughs> pattern, because I saw it, I said, that's what I'm doing. I didn't even look at anything else. But isn't it And amazing? then you get to choose your colors. You know, you draw the design onto the wood first, which is, a, you know, part of the prep work. When you're doing anything, the prep work is so important. Right. But we actually started class at 10, and I was done with this at 2. Yeah. And what I can tell you is I have done a barn quilt that's hanging on the front of my house by myself. <laughs> And I learned so much today, <laughs> and that thing took me two days to do, and it does not look professional. <laughs> In fact, I, I think I, I bought some ugly Hobby Lobby art on discount and repainted over the top of that. And um, That's this, what you used as your base? Yes. Well, that was kind of smart to just well, find something that worked for right, you. Right, because I, I couldn't think about how I would cut wood or how I would prep it. So right. this already had something not very attractive on it, and I just painted over it. But I learned so much technique-wise. That is why I have ended up with this work of art that is going to replace the block that I have on the front of my house. <laughs> because this truly... No, I have to show you one looks. thing that Anna did. Yeah. Um, and it's truly Anna style. Oh, good. It's not something bad. That I was no. going, oh, no, oh, did, no. I, did I? <laughs> it's perfect. So it is that there is a little bit of a technique to get the, the tape um, 
each section taped off perfectly so that then you can paint and it takes two or three layers of, yeah. or coats of paint, I should say, rather than layers, to, to fill that space. And then you peel the tape off and her lines are perfect. And then <laughs> you work from the outside in in this project. So she got to the point where the only thing left was the color thread parts of these spools. And Smarty Pants over here mixed <laughs> two or three different colors together so I that did, she could have the I striations yeah. of thread, thread on each of those spools, which is genius. I probably wouldn't have thought of that myself. <laughs> well, I wanted to make it look like thread, so I was thinking, do I put little lines? And I said, no, I think, I think maybe I'll, I want, you know me, you've been around for a while. <laughs> I'm looking for the easiest way to get a project done. And so I thought I'd brush it with uh, two or three different colors. And I like the way it turned out. It has just that little hint of something else going on mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's beautiful. I am so proud of this. You can't imagine how proud I am of this. I mean, I cannot believe every single person in our class was having a great time. And everybody finished. And so that's one of the other things yeah. that I love about my classes is when you're done with that class... Your project is finished. It's not like you have to take it home and work on it. No, not at all. You only have to take it home and hang it up somewhere. Yes, which I'm not going to have a problem doing, <laughs> replacing that other one. So I would say if you have a guild or a shop that you are in the Pacific Northwest and you would like Sheila to come teach, I think that's a really smart thing to do. And I know you're smart quilters out there. <laughs> You know, one of the things I did earlier in my life was I was an occupational therapist. I wanted to know what you did before. Yeah. Because I thought you were a kindergarten teacher. No. no. Occupational but therapy. But in therapy, you're sitting across the table from a patient, mm -hmm. and the goal is to figure out what they need to get back to their independence. Yeah. And, <laughs> that sounds you know, so great they've, for they've a They've had a stroke. They've mm -hmm. had a head injury or, you know, whatever whatever the issue is. Um, in my last job, I, I, my specialty was in hand therapy. So I'm sitting across the table. What is it that I can help you with that you need to accomplish today? Um, and so then we're going to take that task and we're going to break it down into manageable pieces and we're going to practice those pieces until you've perfected them whatever it is. No wonder and then you put are it all so together. Great so I really do like taking apart the task and well that's probably why everyone step. finishes their project is that they're already set up oh, and for I have success. No, I have no problem stepping in and saying you're <laughs> you're doing it this way try this uh -huh. a little bit lighter hand maybe or you know just whatever it is so when did you go from occupational therapy to the quilting life you know um, therapy is wonderful. I still love the patients and their families, and I still love the problem solving of helping, you know, figuring out what it is people need and how to help them. But I did get a little mad at Medicare at one time. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, G and I are too. <laughs> and because Medicare likes to tell the therapist, and we all think we're experts, <laughs> what the patient can have. Oh. rather than us telling them what the patient Jeez. needs. And that was very frustrating. So at about in 1999, exactly, because it was when the millennium changed, I decided I am a very talented woman and I can do a number of other things. So I bought myself a long arm. You did. And developed a full-time business within about six weeks in 2000 when the millennium changed. I quit working as a therapist and started working full-time as a long-arm quilter, which I did full-time for 10 years. So, oh, my gosh. At, I did not know And then that. at that point, um, our circumstances changes, changed, and I needed to be able to provide my own health insurance. So I got my therapy license back again. I didn't go back to the same setting that I had worked in before because that was where the frustration was. I went to a hand um, therapy clinic mm -hmm. and... That was exciting then again for me to go back to that. Mm -hmm. And then I worked because during that 10 years, I had written a book. I was in the middle of my second book, uh, completing that one. Mm -hmm. Started teaching, started traveling a little bit. Um, 
but then I was doing therapy too, so mm -hmm. not full time, fortunately. And I did them both for seven years. Oh, oh yeah. And um, retired from therapy, and I and I won't go, won't need to go back to it mm -hmm. now. Um, just about a year ago now. Oh, so nice. now I'm back to quilting full time. No, oh, nice. And your husband does he help you with the cutting out of all those bases and things for the? No, we have that done professionally. Oh, you do for the not. for the footstools yeah, because for the round footstools and round is difficult. It sounded is, like you painted these. The these because it's plywood uh -huh. and they just need to be cut on a table saw. My son-in-law helps me with that. Oh. We, That's sweet. We've always worked together really well, and uh -huh. and uh, Spencer and I cut those, and then I just take them home, and I have my big tables, you know, set out in in our garage, mm -hmm. and it sounds like a real homey kind of atmosphere, mm -hmm. which it is because I've, you know, got a radio going, and right. or else I've got an audio book going, and I paint. What those. was the it's last a two day book process to? to get those painted? Oh gosh, the last one that I have really enjoyed so much. Um, and I've got one going right now, too, which is totally different. But the last one, I, I like historical fiction. And so the last one I read, listened to it was called The Aviators, oh. which is about the flying aces. Lindbergh, Rickenbacker, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the third guy. Um, they were, you know, in the early era of flying. Mm -hmm. And they were, like, in their 40s or so, I believe, when, thir when World War II happened that they went back into the service mm. and did World War II flying also. I'll have to put that on my list. And and it was um, a really, because I like history in the, in the first place, it was kind of an eye-opening um, book because there was a lot of that, um, especially about Lindbergh, mm -hmm. which I thought I knew a lot about him, but I really didn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I that's, just, and I love that's learning, the best so. part of reading is yeah. all of that. I love learning. So Any other hobbies? Oh gosh, I have grandchildren. Oh and my so gosh, do you. Well, that's yeah, that's a <laughs> hobby. <laughs> so one really fun thing I'm doing this summer. Uh, I have a three year old grandchild, and and she has, that's Stella, and she has a little brother named Ollie, who is about oh, how cute. eighteen months old. So, um, our church does a vacation Bible school, and it only runs in the morning and then they provide daycare in the afternoon for those kids so that those parents don't have to pick them up and take them to daycare right. or leave their work and all that. So I'm offering a sewing class to the kids that have daycare after Bible school this year. How and wonderful. we have a plan. We're going to make um, bean bags, nothing like this, but about that size. Uh -huh. Just um, And incidentally, if you're making bean bags, I want you to fill them with popcorn seeds not beans, because they last so much longer and they don't break oh, down. Good tip. Good tip. So, yeah, your tip of the day. Yeah. So we're going to start with bean bags. We're going to graduate to pillowcases. Oh, that's my go-to present for right. all of the kids and in my so life. And so these kids will not even have, you know, learned how to use a machine. And we, until, have, to, um, we have to be able to pass next this skill on. Yeah. The what are we gonna, Who's going to take all our stashes? You know, we have to have somebody, you know. My grandson's going to learn to sew. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. So that keeps me pretty busy. Oh, well, and then, we're so you know, happy you we come have a, over here. We have a property. Um, it's two acres. I have chickens, you know. And a garden. And, and a big garden. Mm, so there's a lot two, to two do acres this year. Is, is about as much as we can manage. Oh, I don't even know how you manage that. <laughs> Yeah, you could tell by our house we have <laughs> zero yard to take care of. <laughs> so, yeah, I keep busy. Well, thank you so much for it's coming been to so the Beehive. Fun. Oh, uh, I had You such know, Sisters a great time. is one of my favorite towns. I love yeah. coming over here. I will say when I was when I was driving over this morning, I had 40 of these boards, <laughs> you know, in the back of my van, plus all the paint, which is heavy. That would have been great if there was supplies. ice on the road. <laughs> I'm telling you, from the top of the pass down past Subtle Lake, down into, you know, Black Butte and that flat stretch. You don't really need to use your gas, but the car was so heavy, heavy. it was just rolling, rolling, rolling. I was using my brakes quite oh. a lot. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for hanging with us, and we'll see you next time. Be sure to contact Sheila at Sheila Sinclair Snyder at License to Quilt for a class. See you soon.